So I think what we'll do is we've got enough people to officially start the webinar. And as we uh, traditionally do, uh, I'd ask uh, Nathan to run the land acknowledgement uh, for the session, please. We acknowledge that the land the Go Open Data Association is webcasting from is the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabek, the Chippewa, the Houghton O'Shaughnessy, and the Wendat peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit and is home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. Toronto was built on sacred land that is part of an agreement between Indigenous peoples and extended to allied nations to peacefully and respectfully care for it. Okay, thanks very much for that. And uh, so <clears throat> what we'd like to do is to start with uh, a little bit of history here. When we're talking about collaboration and with, uh, uh, with that, I went back and found uh, a presentation that I had made back in 2010. Um, and you may see some similarities to where we are or are not today. Um, and collaboration and citizen engagement was a big part of that. So one of the things, and Back in the day, back then, there was something called Wordle, where you could put in a whole whack of text and it, it, it populated what, uh, what was most prominent. And when we looked at open government and open data, uh, the highlighted terms uh, came up very large and collaboration being one of them. Uh, so the open government framework itself uh, was identified as having a number of components, collaboration and participation, open data, uh, organization, the culture of Gov 2.0. Back then it was called Gov 2.0, <laughs> policies and standards and technology. Um, so the collaboration part of it, I'm not going to read all of this, but from previous events that I had been at, around collaboration, there were a couple of key quotes that I really liked. And, uh, they are reality. All of us is smarter than one of us. And the other one uh, that is infinitely true is that there are more knowledgeable, knowledgeable people outside your organization than inside. So collaboration, uh, there is a hierarchy of mutually beneficial relationships. And I won't detail them. I'll simply say that uh, they consist of networking, coordinating, cooperating. And that the, the highest hierarchy of the relationships is collaborating, uh, requiring greatest level of trust, time, and share of organizational resources and jurisdiction. The important point here is that there is a continuum uh, and we're all at differing levels of that continuum. Uh, so there's another view of the collaboration continuum and this one uh, particularly pertains to a political uh, that will be speaking with us in just a moment. Um, so from a regional to provincial, national and global, uh, the geographic extents of, of potential collaboration. And just as a, a flashback, I'm putting this up because it's it's around open data specifically, but it goes back to the thinking around that from 1994, uh, 
the idea of bringing local spatial data infrastructures into a provincial level and then up to a national level and then obviously to a global data uh, or a global level. And the final, uh, you know, the change came about when the cloud became uh, far more relevant than it was back in 1994. Um, so the idea of opendataca.ca coming from the public sector data coming in to external uh, data sources like the World Bank, uh, then academia, nonprofits and community groups, and then uh, initiatives like OpenStreetMap and community updates. So, you know, we've had discussions in Canada around, uh, or pilots around federated open data. Uh, and of course, this is going back to 2010, and I'm not sure that we're anywhere close to where we should be uh, around there. So it speaks to the need for more collaboration. And the idea is that we should be doing it. Uh, we should be doing it now. And so with that kind of context and background, uh, I'll stop the share and I want to turn it over to uh, Derek and Renzo. And I'll, I'll firstly ask the two of them to introduce themselves and then after that, uh, Derek, if you could start with your presentation. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, actually, Renzo, why don't I let you go first and then I can jump and then I'll just go straight into the presentation. Of course. Yeah, so hi everyone. Uh, I'm Renzo, I'm staff software engineer here at Political, and I've been around for four, four years now. Um, as part of my role, I helped the team um, get the projects off the ground and set the technical direction. And one of the things that I've been tasked to do is now help with um, the open data community. So I've been uh, leading the conversations a little bit in that community and trying to you know, get the conversations going with the members of the community. So that's been a really nice uh, experience for me as a community manager. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about me. Over to you, Derek. Brilliant. And and uh, I'm wanting to rent off the hook here because it's his first day back from holiday. So instead of throwing him straight into the fire here, <laughs> um, I'll, I'll hop in and do the presentation about what we're doing here. Uh, so my name's uh, Derek Alton. Uh, as you might be able to tell or not tell uh, from my accent as I'm uh, Canadian, I know many of you already, uh, but for those of you who don't know me, um, I um, worked for the government of Canada for, for many years. Uh, and I'm also one of the co-founders of the Canadian Open Data Society, um, which uh, many of you are also connected with. So, uh, and have been a, a long supporter and uh, advocate for good as well. Uh, so super excited to be here. Um, it's interesting. So when you move to the UK, uh, land acknowledgements aren't really a thing here. But being Canadian, I thought, you know, what would a land acknowledgement look like from the UK, from where I sit? Um, and really, I think a lot of what land acknowledgement is about is recognizing that you stand on land that has a history to it and that you are not the first people here, that there are stewards that go back a really long time who were stewards of the land before you. So, uh, you know, trying to do my due diligence, I was looking at the history of where I sit. So I sit in a place called St. Albans. So St. Albans is just north of London in the UK. Um, and uh, before the British were here, um, well, British is a is a it's a complex term as i've since discovered uh, but before the people who are here now are here this was actually a roman settlement so if you go back two thousand years ago there's actually ruins just around the about five minutes away from me that were a roman settlement um but before the romans were here uh it was uh, a group called the ikeni i don't know if i'm saying that right but ikeni which was one of the uh, indigenous groups to this area and in fact the ikeni have uh, a claim to fame because they were 
uh, one of the more successful groups at fighting the Romans and have actually torched <laughs> the settlement. The Roman settlement that was here was actually set on fire and captured by the Ichni, uh, who were not happy with the Romans being there. Uh, and Boudicca, who you might have heard of, this is where she did it. She was the leader of the group at the, at the time. So there's this rich history of people who've been in this, this area and have shaped the land going back thousands of years. Um, so it's kind of interesting to learn the history of where you are. So that's my encouragement. Wherever you are, you know, take some time, just learn the history. Uh, of where you are uh, sitting. And uh, it's kind of fun to hear how things have evolved. But also with that comes a sense of responsibility that you are now the steward wherever you are. And you want to make sure that you take care of the land for generations to come. So uh, let us jump in. I shall open the slideshow and share my screen and give you a bit of a background about apolitical. But really what we want to talk about is not so much apolitical, but what we're doing around building a global uh, open data community. All right. So uh, first things first, apolitical. Uh, so I'm the Community Insights Lead for Apolitical. I've been here for about two and a half years since leaving Canada and moving to the UK. Um, so I want to give you a bit of overview of apolitical, but then we're really going to dive into this whole idea of building a global community uh, for open data. So apolitical, it's uh, a B corporation. We exist to really help make government better. Our mission is to help build 21st century government that works for people on the planet. So we're a mission-driven organization. What we do, though, is we are really focused about helping to get this 21st century government. It's about helping upskill and helping connect public servants with leading ideas and practices around the world to help them become better at what they're doing. So we are the world's only learning platform focused uniquely on the public service. Public servants, those are who we work with. And we work with a lot of them. Uh, our community is over a quarter million people, 250,000 people uh, from over 160 different countries around the world. We are a global community. We're a global network uh, with people from, you know, Brazil, uh, lots of people from Singapore, Australia, New Zealand, India, UAE, US, and of course, a ton of people from Canada. In fact, Canada is our second biggest um, community represented geographically uh, of the 250,000. There's, I think, around 72,000. I think it's about 72,000 Canadians uh, who are active on the platform from all levels of government, local, provincial, and federal. I think in terms of the Ontario government, I was looking at the numbers just the other day, I think it's about 20,000 uh, from the government of Ontario, uh, which is a good chunk of people. Um, and, and really at the heart of what we do, we do a bunch of different things. So again, the goal is to help public servants learn to make them better at the job that then makes government better at tackling the great challenges of our time and creating better societies. So we do that in a couple of different ways. Uh, we do uh, online courses, um, uh, all sorts of different topics. Uh, we do lots of events, mainly webinars, uh, usually about two or three a week. Um, and our webinars usually draw in anywhere from 400 to 1,000, sometimes more than that people. Uh, again, from around the world. Um, and then articles and community. So we are the world's largest repository outside of probably Medium and Substack uh, of articles and blogs written by public servants for public servants. Um, and so it's something we're really proud of. But the thing that I really want to talk to you about today is communities. So this is something that we've moved into in the last year. Um, and it's this recognition that in the world we live in today, we're social creatures. We learn through community. We learn through being together and sharing best practices. I mean, this is what good does. You guys bring people together to help them learn about open data, how it's being used, how it can be used better. There's a learning aspect to everything that you do. And community is a, a key driver of enabling and fostering that learning. So how does this work? We have got a forum and I'll show you it in a second. Uh, on, that we actually have 30 different forums on 30 different topics, one of which is open data. Um, and really the idea is to create a space where an online space where people who are working on whatever subject from around the world can connect, share resources, ideas, events, ask questions, support each other uh, to help move forward whatever the issue is. So this is a screenshot from, I believe this is the AI community, but it is actually out of date because we're now at about 4,300 in the AI community. Um, and again, broad topics from AI to neurodiversity. Uh, we have a lot of stuff we do on climate. So we have a net zero community, uh, writing effectively in government. Interesting side note, writing is our most popular course. Uh, turns out writing is very important when you're a public servant. Uh, and so there's a keen interest in continually trying to figure out how to become a better writer. So we created a community around it and it has been uh, quite successful with thousands of people joining it. Um, 
And, and really, again, the whole point is to create a space that brings people together across geographies, across uh, experiences to enable them to share best practices and learn from each other. Um, so I'm going to start a step away here and let's see, hopefully you're still seeing my screen. So if I go like this, you see this. Yes. Thumbs up. We're now in the open data community. Brilliant. Okay. So this is a new community that we launched, uh, just about a couple months ago. Um, you'll recognize, uh, our very own Paul Connor, uh, here. Um, he's one of our top contributors. Uh, Yuri, I think you're in here as well. If I remember, I think I saw you post a bit. There you are. Ah, there's Yuri. Uh, uh, Jamie, I saw you're on the call as well. There you are, Jamie. Excellent, excellent. Um, so this is a place, it's literally just a form. It's a place you can post information, you can learn about things, you can connect, you can share uh, resources, ask questions. Um, so we haven't had any questions posted yet. This is a new community. So you could be the first person to pose the question in, the, in this group. Uh, events, um, obviously there's some events coming up. Um, uh, this is, we're trying to sort of create a list of, events are coming up. So we got obviously um, CODS is coming up in, oh my God, next week. Ooh, next week is CODS. Um, but there's more events. Mike Gifford, who's another person that I know many people here know, is just sharing some events that he's got here. Um, I'm going to see if I can track down uh, some people from the Open Data Charter team because they have regular events, including a monthly call that Yuri, I think you've participated in. I remember seeing a screenshot and I think I saw your face in that. Um, so it's a monthly call that the Open Charter community is doing. The idea is that this can be a place that you can, one, promote your events. So, uh, you know, this is a chance that place you can promote good events and have people from around the world sort of jump in and, and learn more about the work that you're doing at Good, uh, but also a chance to learn about other events uh, that are out there as well. I think that kind of covers the key things I wanted to talk about with this. So this is a global community for public servants and for people who work to support public servants from around the world, uh, all uh, about connecting people and ideas around, in this case, open data. Um, we're at 218 people, but the goal is to get into the thousands, like we saw with neurodiversity and uh, with AI, for example. Um, what this community evolves into is gonna be dependent upon the leadership that the people in the community provide, right? We as a political here, we're here to create the space and to support it. Renzo's here, he's active in the community and, and engaging, but where the community goes is really up to people who choose to take leadership and help guide us in the direction we want. So my ask of you. So first off, I wanna put this on your radar. Now you know about it, open data community. Uh, it'd be great to have a strong Canadian representation. Um, two, uh, join the community. You've already seen Yuri and Jamie here. Uh, the rest of you, uh, Connie, I think you are also in here somewhere. Uh, if you're not, you should be. Uh, <laughs> join the community. Three, share this community with your network. All of you have networks, share with your networks, uh, particularly those of you who are working with public servants. Um, this is a great place to point them to. If people are like, open data curious, send them here. There's lots of great uh, resources. It's a great place to sort of get onboarded into the open data conversation in a less intimidating way. Uh, Cause you can be, you can just be a lurker and just watch and see the information come through. Um, and then uh, three, post things. So join, share it through your networks, post things, uh, resources, ideas, questions, all these different things that I know all of you have a ton of information going through. Um, and then four, if you're interested, help us figure out where we can take this, become a champion and, and really shape this global community into what it can really be. Um, Renzo, is there anything else I should say that, uh, beyond that? Any. Uh, well, just a caveat there, um, you could even invite colleagues uh, directly from the platform there with the, the invite functionality. Um, you could also see the list of the users as well there. Um, but I mean, mo most of you are already um, familiarized with the, with the platform. Um, but um, yeah, I think it's, it's early days um, as... Um, they were saying uh, we are with over 200 uh, members right now. And um, we, yeah, we, we really want to see the um, community uh, shape um, in, in a way where more uh, content is being um, created on the platform. Um, I think there's also a big opportunity for us to start um, diversifying a little bit more um, the platform where um, members can uh, start join, joining from different locations. I think right now in the open data community, um, we mostly have uh, users for from the 
North uh, Globe. Um, but we have an owner Aaron, um, working with us, um, trying to get more members from uh, South America as well. Um, so that's been a great initiative. Uh, we are also running uh, within the, the open data community. Um, so yeah, I think you, Derek, you know, cover most of the bases right now. Sorry, I, I, somehow I got, I got logged out mid-presentation. So I will log back in. You can see uh, the <laughs> list here of different people um, from all over the place. Um, yeah, and and like Renzo said, we're keen to get more into the Global South. Uh, Marissa is a person working with out of Argentina uh, mm -hmm. who's helping us there, but also the Open Data Charter uh team which is uh has a very strong global south presence in latin america i had no idea that the open data community is incredibly strong in latin america uh, and so they're going to work with us to help oh there's connie i knew you're in here somewhere connie um and uh yeah so the open data community uh from argentina and from latin america more generally we're hoping to bring in the other thing that i'm very excited about uh and uh i'm not gonna put rents on the spot about timelines because i know you probably don't know but internationalization uh, something that's on our roadmap for early next year. Uh, and that's going to be a game changer. The ability to be in a community, because right now this is very English, this platform, um, but the world is not very English. It is many languages. And so we're very excited to have internationalization in 2025 that will allow people to engage in the platform in the language of their choice. And that means that you'll be able to engage and talk directly with people from uh, you know, Brazil, from Japan, from all over the place, and they'll be talking to you in their first language, and you'll be able to talk to them in your first language. And it'll be machine translated. It won't be perfect, but it'll be good enough to enable the sharing of information, which I think will really just open the world up uh, in terms of sharing and connection uh, around the world. Well, why don't we stop there and uh, really turn over to you. What questions do you have? Um, and if you don't have any questions for me, I definitely have questions for you. So, but I'm going to give you a chance first uh, to uh, sort of uh, hear what sort of feedback, thoughts, reflections, questions, concerns, ideas you have for us. Well, <clears throat> let me start off with uh, with thanking a political for all the great work they do. Um, but in, in regards to the communities, I'm a member of a number of different you know, communities of practice. And typically when we're having online conversations, uh, there is kind of feedback into my inbox automatically when something new comes up, uh, like in GC Collab, right? Mm -hmm. But I don't, we don't have that yet, as I understand it, with apolitical, and I'm just wondering when that might happen. Uh, I can probably speak to part of this, and Renzo, you can then jump into all the gaps I have in my response. But um, I mean, there is definitely some, like, you will get, e so email is the main place that you get notifications um, from this community. So it's linked to your email. Uh, you'll get a weekly digest of the content coming out of the communities that you're part of that comes out, I believe, either Monday or Tuesday. I think it's Monday. Um, and um, so they get that. And then anytime someone uh, likes or comments on something that you've written, you get an email notification. And if um, anyone tags... Uh, if you get tagged in anything, you also get an email notification. So I can even test this out. Um, do, do, do. If I tag you, if I write something, I'll share my screen so you see what I'm doing. Yeah, uh -huh. I think that's that's um, right. What one of the things we were thinking about um, including within the platform is um, notifications, but straight within the platform. Um, having some sort of bell at the top where you can also see notifications of things happening within the, the communities. But uh, that's probably further down the pipeline early early next year. Um, but as Derek was mentioning, um, right now, uh, mo most of the notifications will be uh, via email. And 
for all of the functionalities that he mentioned, like liking, commenting, um, tagging someone, um, and so on and so forth. So you go, I've just made a post, I've tagged Yuri, I create said post. Uh, Yuri, you should now get, uh, if you go to your emails, you should have a notification saying, hey, uh, Derek has tagged you <laughs> in a post. Uh, and so you should get a notification. Yeah, I, I'm looking at my emails now and I get uh, something that says this week on a political, mm -hmm. uh, which is a lot of articles and things about events, but um, not seeing kind of a, a, a summary of activity in the, in the communities that I'm subscribed to. So again, I'm I'm not seeing you know the, the new the new content. So is there something I didn't sign up for or that's something we can look into um especially around the digest. Um so let's let's come back to that one. Um Later, but we we will definitely look into that. Um, one of the functionalities that we currently have is a weekly digest, uh, where you will get the most popular um comments on communities that you have um subscribed to or that you are a member of. Yeah. You should, I'm just seeing if I can find mine. You should get it every week. And like I said, I think it, it either comes out Monday or Tuesday. I think it comes out Monday. I always get a bit confused with the uh, This Week in Apolitical. So you you should get two emails a week. Yeah, I think the tagline weekend. for that one is your name, see what you missed. Um, and then you will you will have them. And, and yeah. Oh, okay. All right. I see it. Oh, okay. You found it? Brilliant. Yeah. That's great because... It is lost in my inbox because I get so many emails that <laughs> okay. <what> it <laughs> um cool. Thanks, Jerry. Any other sort of thoughts, reflections, feedback? Well, I think Jonathan uh, had a number of questions. So Jonathan, if you want to unmute yourself and uh and then pose well, the questions. Yeah, uh, unfortunately I'm in a cafe, so um <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sort of thinking of the November 5th uh, webinar session uh, and how I might be able to build off of what A Political is doing in my questions to that panel. It's on using smart communities to adapt local public infrastructure to climate. Oh, nice. Yeah, and, and particularly if it's an open event, you could definitely promote that in our climate community, for example. Um, and you might get some people from uh, different parts of the world who might uh, tune in uh, through that. Um, That's great, because I'm hosting it with our local mayor and uh, public works and those people uh, at Venture 13. Yeah, this is this is I mean, one like the way I look at this is this is meant to be a watering hole, uh, a watering hole for people to come uh, to learn about what events, resources, activities are happening around a given topic to be able to ask questions to their peers. Um, so definitely see this as a place that can help amplify the work that you're doing, um, events you're doing. Um, yeah. I like that analogy of the water hole, but water holes back in ancient times were not necessarily apolitical. This is true. <laughs> that, is tr that is true. And it'll be interesting to see how that works. Uh, we have one on digital public infrastructure that we just launched a couple of weeks ago. And that's going to be an interesting one because it turns out digital public infrastructure is incredibly political. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that's that's an interesting one. Um, Eric, I'm wondering, could you share your screen and show what you have available through resources? Uh, sure. I'm, I'm just I'm trying to understand your question. So what, what specifically do you want me to share? Uh, resources like apolitical resources. Uh, like, do you, like, there's a couple different ways we could slice that. Do you mean resources in the open data community? Which, yeah. uh, not, uh, so far, not, nothing has been labeled as a resource. Okay. We're, uh, we're working, uh, runs, this is something we have to figure out is how to convince, this is a human challenge of how to get people to use these tags. <laughs> yes. <Right. laughs> 
but but, uh, but, I, but a political in general has a lot of resources and i'm wondering if if you could just illustrate what, what yeah sure so, like. okay so welcome to apolitical this is my home page um so you can see just new activities um oh this is a really fun article that robbie who's a public servant in australia wrote uh it's quite good uh upcoming events this is events that um apolitical is doing on a range of different topics uh communities programs uh program areas so here we've got you know we're doing a lot of stuff around digital training in the uk an ai campus climate campus um yeah so there's lots of things happening here oh newsletters so lots of interesting newsletters uh weekly uh this is uh, this is one that no, the a which one's the, one? the apolitical view is the one that Robin writes, I think, right? That's the that's the one that Robin writes. Right. This week in apolitical is sort of what Yuri yeah. was mentioning um, that you get in your inbox. Um, anyways, there's tons of different resources and a myriad of different topics. So let's take, for example, uh, open. Hey, wait, hey, hey, wait. Uh, take yes. the UK digital twin one as your example, because that'll feed into our November fifth webinar. UK digital twin. That's right. I what, what do you mean? You just highlighted it in one of the postings, the UK's digital twin work. Did I? Oh, sorry. No, I, I think I might miss book. Digital transformation. This is digital Sorry, I thought it was digital twin. I was getting all upset. That said, I'm pretty sure we've got always something in here about digital twins. So if you just search. Do, 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 do. Reason that because... Infra infrastructure Ontario is doing a $5 million pilot with the UK on um, uh, subsurface infrastructure, like how to digitize it with a digital twin. Oh, really? So wait, the UK and Ontario are working together on this? Yeah, it's a $5 million pilot with the Ontario's Infrastructure Ontario, which is a crown corporation. And uh, the UK, uh, I've forgotten the name of it, but it's, oh, interesting. it's posted. And we're doing a, we're having somebody talk about that uh, huh. on November 5th, our next one. That is really cool. Uh, that is an interesting collaboration. Um, really cool. Uh, I don't think there's anything on here. I'm I'm not aware of anything on here yet. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything. So. Uh, so one of the things that we've got, um, and I think Renzo, this is partly your fault. So well done, uh, is this AI, this AI search function here, which is really cool. Um, so, uh, you know, when you search something, it, I mean, Google's not doing this as well. So uh, it's, it's uh, this is in some ways the future, uh, but we're trying to keep up with it as well. Um, so you, when you search something, the internal AI will give you a summary of uh, whatever that topic is from uh, content on apolitical. So here we go, here's a description of digital twins, some more information about it. And this is drawn from these two articles. Um, so Derek, in a way, what you're doing is um, you're personalizing chat GPT-4. Chat GPT-4 is using old data. Yeah. And uh, what I like about this is that it, it is, it's the human are in the, humans in the loop. It's also a more specific data set. So this is this this is trained on the data set from apolitical and apolitical's content is all related to public service. It's either created with or by public servants. Um, like all of our content is either with or by public servants. Uh, so it's 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 much more focused. The quality I think is higher than you would. It, well, I think quality is definitely higher than if you just searched on Google uh, or the data that ChatGPT is pulling from. Um, so let's put in open data and see what comes back. Do, do. This is a bit of a broader topic, so we should get more. Yeah, perhaps one of the caveats to mention here is that um, at the moment, the results uh, being surfaced with the search uh, system will only take into consideration um, the articles that we have on the platform. But one of the things that we want to start doing in the future is incorporating the content from courses and perhaps the transcripts of uh, events and also some of the information we have on communities if the communities are open. Yep. So, so would, you, would you be able to aggregate uh, information from past events like uh, our conferences or our webinars? Would you be able to, our YouTube postings or social media? 
would you have a way of sort of aggregating specifically for that community of practice? If I think if the content lives within a political, we will have the, the chance to do that. Um, so as I, as I was saying, um, right now, this, this will only uh, work with articles, but in the future, if we have um, that content on communities, for instance, and you are sharing some specific links, we could probably uh, get the information from there to feed the AI system. Yeah, and, and that, so that, that's specifically the AI function. Yeah, that's, that's the, right. The, the search function currently does pull from uh, a broader set of data in a political. So mm -hmm. the, 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 the AI is specifically right now just trained on articles, whereas the search, it's articles. You can see it's articles, it's community, it's um, courses, it's events, um, and Q&A, which is what predated... Uh, communities that's mm -hmm. sort of our, our first run at that um yeah so that gives you an idea so these are like oh there's again paul popped up paul's written an article um so we're in a couple articles actually now look at it. um obviously with regards to communities we've got open data there's also an open source community that i suspect many people will be interested in there's a actually you know what i'm gonna can i i go here um this gives you an idea of all the different communities we have currently. And if there's a community that we don't have that you think we should have, uh, reach out to us, let us know. Uh, we are always creating new communities in response to what people want to see. Uh, the key thing for us is we just never want to do anything on our own. Uh, we always want to do it in collaboration with others. So the open data community is done in collaboration with Good, with CODs, uh, with the OGP, with um, Open Data Institute, uh, Open UK, there's about five different organizations that have agreed to sort of help make this community happen, including you. So thank you for that. Um, yes, yeah, so this gives you an idea of different topics. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the AI community was our first one. It's also our most popular one. Uh, I know there's people here who've lost the thoughts on AI. So pop into the AI community and uh, you can see lots of activity happening there. Um, one of the things that we've noticed with some communities is that oftentimes once a community starts to get some momentum, they start to want to self-organize and do things together. So in the case of AI, what they wanted to do was they wanted to do uh, show and tells. They wanted to see like, what are people building with AI in government? And so they now have, I think it's, I don't think it's quite monthly. I think it's every six weeks. Every six weeks they do a show and tell where a different government comes and shares a bunch of the stuff that they've been building. And it's a chance to sort of see behind uh, underneath the hood, understand how they've built this. Um, a chance for people to ask questions like, how did you solve the, you know, how did you deal with the legal? <laughs> you know, what's the data governance uh, model for how your AI they're using? What's privacy? How are you dealing with these privacy concerns? Stuff like that. So that's what this community has done. Um, and so there's definitely an opportunity for the open data community to likewise start organizing something. Um, we've also seen, uh, there's other things that are quite popular. Uh, Ask me anything's are really popular, uh, an effective way to uh, get momentum and engagement on a community, particularly on a topic. We just did an ask me anything last week with uh, digital accessibility. Uh, we had someone from Delaware, the government of Delaware, um, who did an AMA. Um, and uh, I've actually really enjoyed the AMAs because they've been really, um, yeah. Andrew did so. Andrew did an AMA, um, and you know he had his you know good questions and his answers were really good. Uh, Andrew did a really good job responding to to all these different questions and uh, yeah. So I kind of put this to you like that. This is a community that, that you guys are helping with. You know, what ideas do you have to make this community sing? How can we really make this into the place to go? on anything to do with open data. And through this, people then can discover, you know, the stuff that Good's doing, for example, um, the stuff that Misa is doing, for example, the stuff that CODS is doing, all these different things. This is meant to be a place of discovery uh, as well. Any other thoughts, questions? Well, more, more of a comment, Derek. Um, you, you know, 
you speak to the focus being on, uh, you know, government members, but in fact, uh, many of the members are not public servants. Uh, they are in nonprofits, you know, such as Good and CODs and MISA, uh, but MISA is more uh, government oriented. But I'm not clear when you speak about apolitical, some people may think that it's only for uh, government employees, which I don't believe is the case. So the way, well, show, don't tell. We have, uh, who can join? So the mission of apolitical is really about, um, the mission of apolitical is about making government work better. Now, to make government work better is not just a project of public servants. It's a project of all of us. We all have a role to play in helping make government better. Um, and so apolitical is really focused on like, okay, if we want to make government better, we are focusing on public servants as our primary audience. But our secondary audience is all these different people who are involved, you know, in things like academics, think tanks, you know, non-government organizations, um, consultants that work directly with governments. Um, so that's how I, I guess would answer your question, Yuri, is like the mission is to make government better. That is all of our responsibility and opportunity. Public servants are the primary vehicle that we're focusing on, but around them is a whole constellation of people like many of the people who are here on this call who aren't officially public servants, but uh, have a play a role in, in helping make government better uh, by bringing forward really good ideas, by implementing some of the things the government's doing. The government doesn't do stuff on its own. It works with all sorts of different groups to implement policies and programs. Um, yeah. And, and, and to push government to do things better. <laughs> There's a whole advocacy piece to this as well. So. Hey, thank you. Jonathan, you had another question, I believe. Well, I've got more than one question. But the one question I posted in the chat is uh, how you might leverage this apolitical um, tool to support this Infrastructure Ontario UK collaboration on digital twins. Because there you see you're dealing with a Crown Corporation, uh, so public servants, and then the ecosystem surrounding them to make government work more effectively would include like ourselves, an NGO, and uh, I would argue for consultants that are social entrepreneurs, so like the Corp Bs, not just your typical uh, big tech firms that hire their supply chain people. So, Jonathan, if I understand you correctly, your question specifically like on this, this is a particular use case. What can they Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm putting out a challenge for you to demonstrate to us, members of CODs and uh, Good, how we might use your tool to make government better uh, through this $5 million initiative between the Ontario government and the UK. Well, Jonathan, if I were you, <laughs> what I would do, how I would use this platform to support the work that you're doing, uh, I think there's a couple of things. Um, so one is, uh, it, it also depends on what your goal is, right? So if your goal is awareness, um, I think there's a couple of ways you can raise awareness about this project, just get more eyeballs on it. Uh, one is writing an article about it and then sharing that in a bunch of, well, one that we will share that, that article out through our network of 250,000. Um, but then also sharing that article in particular communities to generate interest and buzz. That's one. The second thing, though, is if you have something more specific, you're like, I want to see examples of digital twins in action. Who else is doing digital twin work that can help with this? That's a great question. Um, that would probably make sense if I were you. I would post that in probably this community here, Digital Trans. In fact, I would post it in a couple communities. Um, but Digital Transformation is a good one. And, and poses a question, like, who is doing work on digital twins? And... Um, how, what advice do you have to make it a successful project? If you make that post here and then tag me, 
I will tag some people I know who've done work on digital twins. I'm going through my head. There's a couple people I know who've played yeah. around digital twins. Yeah, you just have you have to remember that it's digital yeah. twin like smart technologies to Yeah, that I would post that I would post it here, the digital transformation community. And given the way you've framed it, I would also probably post it in the um where is it here? The digital public infrastructure community as well. Because so you'll get different audiences. They're coming at it from different angles, right? So um these people are really interested in the infrastructure question. Um, whereas the digital transformation people are much more interested in the digital question. Um and so I think you'll get different people who will engage with it in different communities and different pieces of information. Yeah, post some stuff in there, tag me so I can then, I mean, we, we're still in the early days. So you need to do a bit of, I need to do a bit of polling people in, but there's a couple of people off the top of my head who I think would have some experiences. There's a guy, oh, I'm trying to remember his name. I can picture his face, Bruno from the, Bruno from the, who runs the lab for Amsterdam is really big into digital twins. And there's another person I know he's on. So he's on this community. Um, there's another person I know who's a digital twins person as well. There, there's a bunch of it. It's a growing area of interest within government. Anyways, this is an international community. So it's, it'll be your chance to engage with people who are playing with these questions in different parts of the world to hear how they're doing it and to learn from them. Hi, uh, Derek and Renzo. Uh, thank you for this. I love uh, the site. I think it's going to be a, a fantastic resource. Um, for the open data community specifically, um, and a, a great collaboration tool. And I've, I've already gotten some ideas because we're um, we're working on an open data professional certification uh, for people that practice in the space. So we're actually in the middle of gathering community feedback on our, um, on our straw man proposal for open data professional certification. So I've got some ideas for articles and, and um, once we get our survey out, we're I'm going to come here and post it for sure to get some feedback. Um, I have a couple nitpicky things. <laughs> maybe I just miss them, um, but maybe just personal preference as well for the site. Um, is there a way to search specifically in the community for a post? I'm going to toss that over to you, Renzo. That's a great question. <laughs> um, yes, right now, right now we don't have the ability to search. Um, this is definitely something we want to introduce. Um, Within communities, which will make um, surfacing the content a lot easier for for users. So um, we hear you, <laughs> and we we will will probably be working on that soon. Um, but uh, yeah, at the moment um, we we don't have that uh, yet in place. So recent is a feed where you have the post being ordered based on the timestamp, basically. And then popular are the posts uh, who are, you know, most popular based on a particular ranking that we have, which takes into account the likes and the comments, but also has a decay. So over time, posts will go uh, down uh, the ranking. So those are the two ways we have to sort of surface the, the content, but we will definitely be introducing a search functionality soon. Okay, that's Perfect. I'd love to hear that. Um, yeah, because there could be something in there that you've seen in the past and you're like, oh, I really want that and I got to yeah. go find it. Um, so that's great. The other thing is, again, this is just a minor technical thing, but all of the posts appear in, in these sort of similar sized rectangles. And um, as the post is too long to fit in there, it sort of fades uh, you can see it kind of fades out and then to see the post you click on it goes to a new page would it be possible to have maybe like a little arrow that would expand that post so you could see it all in line on the page instead and then maybe click to go um, into it and add comments yeah just a minor suggestion also, also great no great feedback uh to be honest um Thank you, Jamie, for, for that. Um, I'll, I'll definitely pass this information to our, our product managers, and I'm sure that they will love to hear this uh, because, um, I mean, you really are the ones shaping the, the platform and everything, you know, you feed back to us uh, will help us understand how you, you use it. And I completely... Um, hear you with that sort of navigation issue where you have to go to a different page to 
keep reading uh, the the post, uh, which in most cases will will be what you have to do because you are you know you want to add quite a bit of information on each post, so you don't get to see everything on on that initial feed. So that's that's yeah another good really good comment. I think from what I understand, we we try to sort of um, get the initial information on on the post, but we also wanted to have multiple posts being displayed when you see the page. Um, so we were trying to you know trade off between those two scenarios that we could po potentially have like a little like pop up if you click instead of navigating to another page um, or some ideas around that. But uh, yeah, that's that's great feedback. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. No, again, thank you. And uh, I think this is going to be a fantastic resource. And I know us at Go Open Data are going to be making use of this to get uh, our word out and get some feedback. So thank you again. I think it's fantastic. Thanks so much, Jamie. And I mean, one thing I'll say, so the exciting part is like, we're on the ground floor. So you guys are coming in on the ground floor of this. Um, and the exciting part about that is that you guys get to really shape what this becomes. Um, the thing about that is that there's still like, we're, we're still at the beginning stages. Like there's so many features we want to build. There's so many different things that are going to be developed in the, you know, what this looks like. And even a couple months from now uh, is going to be different. Um, we, I mean, Renz has been a huge part of this. We're doubling our engineering team. Um, <laughs> the whole engineering team has basically been in hiring mode for the last uh, couple of weeks. Um, and uh, so over the next month or so, it's going to double in size, which is going to really increase our capacity. Uh, and the reason we did that is because we're quite excited by the potential of this, but we also know there's a lot of work that needs to be done. And we want to be responding as quick as we can to the feedback that you're giving us. Um, so all of that is to say, keep keep, keep sending in the feedback, uh, stay tuned. Um, one thing I can say as well is we have started a weekly community check-in on Mondays. And um, what that is, is basically it's half an hour in your schedule uh, we give a short bit of updates and then, uh, on, on things that happen in the community space with the product, with new communities being launched, then we do sort of 10 minutes of heads down, just it's time in your calendar to just go and do stuff in the community. And then the final 10 minutes, we come back and we have a discussion and get feedback. And it's your chance to feed in it. Uh, our CEO, Robin, oftentimes is in that as well as Joel, our chief product officer. So the two most important people to, in terms of making decisions on the platform will be there in many of these meetings. And so you can give feedback directly to the people who are, are going to be uh, making decisions on where the platform goes. Um, so I'm just thinking how to add you. If you send me an email, I'll put my email in the chat. And if you want to be part of this monthly call and just have it in your calendar, uh, send me an email and I will add it to your calendar and you are welcome to drop in uh, whenever you want. So I'll just put my email in the chat. I also know we're over time, so thank you. Yeah, Derek, uh, thank you and Renzo for all of this great uh, insight into apolitical. And I, uh, I'm happy to note that a Political is our latest uh, collaborating organization for good. Um, and I'd encourage everyone on this call, and I will to the membership at large, to uh, join A Political uh, because there's a lot of benefits derived from it. So uh, I'd like to again uh, thank Derek and Renzo for their uh, presentation and and feedback uh, to the questions. Uh, and we thank all of you for being on the uh, on the call and we look forward to moving forward in this space in the future. So everybody have a great uh, afternoon, evening if you're in the UK and uh, we'll uh, we'll talk again soon. Thank you everybody. But it's it's interesting to to see how little we've progressed. I mean, the big conversation right now is around data governance. Like ultimately, like this whole thing around AI has shifted our conversations around uh, open data. I think there's also a big opportunity for us to start um, diversifying a little bit more.